Previously, we have discussed about the steps to produce the Magnol diagram. The steps to produce and to use the Magnol diagram is outlined here. First, you need to derive the stress limit equations. Rearrange the equations in the functions of 1 per P versus E. Then, draw the straight line for each of the equations. There will be one additional straight line which defines the maximum eccentricity possible within the section. Based on the feasible regions proposed by each boundary conditions, the feasible area which fulfill all the requirements are identified. For a simply supported beam, you may draw the magnet diagram for both midspan and the support. Next, choose an appropriate P and E in the feasible area. Use the P and E selected for you to do the check for the stresses to ensure it is within the acceptable stress limit. It is noted that the y-axis is in the form of inverted P, 1 per P. The bigger value of 1 per P will result in smaller pre-stressing load acting on the member. For normal practice, we are looking for the smaller checking force, which is the pre-stressing force as a more economical solution for the pre-stressing members. That means normally we look at the higher regions of the feasible areas. By taking the advantage of the eccentricity, the magnitude of pre-stressing loads may be reduced. In the case that the smaller eccentricity is chosen, you will require a higher magnitude of the pre-stressing load. It is noted that very seldom we are able to choose the most extreme situations at the tip of the boundary conditions. This is normally due to the fact that the other factors like the tendons and its capacity may also govern the decisions of the P. Normally, we are looking into a round number and more or less optimum usage of the tendons available. Sometimes, it is recommended for you to choose a pre-stressing loop that give a certain acceptable range of eccentricity in order to provide adequate flexibility in positioning of the eccentricities. There could be other possible reasons during the fabrications of the pre-stressing members that may impose limitations affecting the intended eccentricity proposed. This may include the congestions of reinforcement bars or even the positions of the anchors. All these need to be taken into consideration before you decide appropriate P and E. These are other aspects which you might need to consider. First, normally we are looking for a larger value of 1 per P, as it leads to lower pre-stressing force, which result in a more economical solution, requiring the hydraulic jack with a lower capacity, tendons or smaller size, and also shorter durations of the pre-stressing operations. Second, to avoid working near a vertex. That means try to avoid choosing the position which is at the tip or at the extreme conditions of the feasible areas. It is so that we provide adequate flexibility in positioning the tendons. Some may recommend you to keep some strand near the top face of the beam. The purpose is to help in resisting the tensile stresses at the top face of the beam 
and also to assist in links acting as the share reinforcement. So if you have concern with the share capacity of the section, you can use higher pre-stressing loot for you to strengthen the share capacity of the section. This can increase the needs of the share link and so that nominal share links can be used without much concern.